I'm going to ask you if you would to open your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. This is going to be a two-part sermon. I'm going to preach the first part this morning about being a person of integrity. And then this evening I want to preach to you a message of being a person on a, of integrity when everything falls apart. Uh, because it's important that we recognize both. I've been doing a series of messages on Sunday nights on finances, and I have so thinned the herd, I think I better give you all a break for that. So uh, we, we have declined every Sunday night since the study. So I'm going to give it a break tonight and uh, come back, and I've got a few more messages uh, from that series. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Then I want to read to you Psalm chapter 25. Psalm chapter 25, verses 20 and 21. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait. For you. Let's bow. Father, bless your word today. Bless us with the understanding and the ability to rightly divide this word. And Lord, teach us what it means to be a person of integrity, to be upright in the way we live. Help us to understand that sin will always destroy, it reduces, it wears out. And Lord, if we're not quite sure about integrity today, I pray you'd give us understanding that we might leave here committed to be these people in a world that needs it so badly. In Jesus' name, amen. Charles Swindoll wrote this, the essential quality, the one ingredient that must be a part of any life that aims to be godly is integrity. So integrity is a very important word. It's important, something that we need to understand. When I was working on our sermons for this year, uh, this was put on my heart to spend a couple of messages on what it means to be a man or a woman of integrity. So that's where we're going to start. Now I'm going to start with a working definition of what it is to be a person of integrity because it's really not a word that we, we use. We may think about it a little bit, but if it's an important ingredient in our lives to be people of integrity, it's something that I think we need to understand. And not only understand it, we need to kind of step up and examine our own hearts and to make a decision. Am I a man or woman of integrity? And if I'm not, what areas do I need to change? And so there's an application built in immediately in the beginning of what this means. Now let me tell you what integrity is not. Integrity is not your reputation. In other words, integrity is not what other people think of you. You can manipulate what other people think of you. How do you do that? You just act a certain way in front of them. <laughs> That's all it is. So, so integrity is not that. It's not what people think of you, okay? And integrity is not what you've accomplished. It's not looking at your life and saying, hey, I've done pretty good with my life. People think highly of me, and I'm appreciative of that, and it's something that just points to the fact that I'm a person of integrity. No, integrity is not your accomplishments. Integrity basically is a total of who you are, how you act, and what you've determined. It's not something you have. Integrity is something that you are. Okay? There's no middle ground there. In other words, I don't, like, like many of the attributes of life, we may can do certain things and claim a title. I'm trustworthy by being trusting, or, or at least people can trust me. Integrity is who we are. We need to remember that, okay? It's not so much... Uh, in what you say or do, and then ultimately, though, integrity is shown by what you do and say. People watch us, folks. 
People watch us. Parents, your children watch you. Grandparents, your children watch you and your grandchildren watch you. And what we're instilling in them by how we live and what we do and how we say and how we interact with one another will pay huge dividends in their life. If you're a man or woman of integrity and that integrity is showcased in the home, you are doing great work before your kids and your spouses. How about a simple definition for integrity? Integrity is the unwavering determination in the heart to do right no matter the cost. Okay, it's deciding I'm going to do right no matter what I might lose, no matter what kind of hardship it creates. In the end, I want to walk in the ways and the honor and the glory of the Lord. And I want to be found faithful. It is a simple straightforwardness to determine in your heart to do right no matter what. Now, foundationally, to be a, a believer in Christ is absolutely necessity to be upright. We, we have to have a foundation under us, okay? So if I ask the questions, do my behaviors, is what I am found doing and thinking about, does that match what I believe about Christ? And does my faith in Christ make a pointed difference in how I live each and every day? The character that I have, does that character match the confession that I've made in Christ? So it's just simply taking an inventory of our life. And I think it's very important that we begin foundationally with who we actually are in Christ. Because that's going to determine ultimately how we're living our life, okay? So I just got a few things I want to go down. I'm going to go through, through quickly because I use this list a good bit. And they're just simple questions. Now the question can be yes or no, and you can answer yes because it feels like the right answer and, and be wrong. <laughs> this isn't religious vocabulary. This isn't a moment for us to say, oh, I know the right answers. I know the right answers. What I'm asking us to do is consider this based upon our lives, what we're doing how we're acting, how we're interacting. And basically your integrity is shown most by how am I reacting. Talk about that tonight, by the way. So, so with that in mind, let me go through a few questions for you. Do I love God? Do I love God? I mean, if we're gathered here today, we would assume I'm here today because I love the Lord. But that's not necessarily true. We, we could be here today and our hearts could be very far from God. The scriptures say many times that our lips, our lips profess faith and praise and belief upon the Lord, but our lives and our hearts and our actions and our attitudes are speaking a completely different thing. The love for God will, will cause you to want to live for Him, to know of Him, to have relationship with Him, to depend on Him, to bring glory to Him, which is to honor and obey the commands. If we love the Lord, then we'll obey the Lord. And that's in 1 John. So that's the first question. If I'm going to be a person of integrity, can I honestly say I love the Lord? Do I have a hatred of sin? A hatred of sin. We recognize as believers that sin is what put Jesus on the cross. We recognize even more so that it was our sins that put Jesus on the cross. And so when we look to a cross and we see a dying Savior, we must be reminded it was because of sin that He died upon that tree. Our sin. So that sin in us, we should just have a holy hatred of sin. And it is a legitimate question when it comes to integrity. Do I practice humility before the Lord? That humility just simply says, do I depend on Him? 
or am I dependent on me? Am I humble before the Lord in requesting my daily needs, asking for His presence as I come humbly before Him to bring my petitions? The attitude of humility is a direct correlation to integrity. It really comes down to recognizing that apart from Him, I'm nothing. But in Him, I can do everything. Am I devoted to the glory of God? Do I live my life daily seeking ways that I can glorify my God in heaven? We can glorify God by parenting. We can glorify God in relationships. We can glorify God in how we serve Him. We can glorify God by how we speak, how we act, how we live, how we have our existence. We can make a choice to bring glory to God by our lives. When we determine to do that, we become people of integrity. Do I have a pattern? Am I consistent in personal and private prayer? Do I talk to God? Do I ask Him? Do I thank Him? Do I praise Him? Do I acknowledge Him? Do I seek Him in that relationship? My little bride today is, is home puny. All of my grandkids, it, well, really all of them have been sick on both sides, but uh, some of them are getting better. Haley and Landon and their crew are still battling. I tell you, they've had a time, almost a month of it. I, I personally think I got the best wife in the world. Now, I know there's some men in here that would, would argue with me, and I hope you argue loud. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. But I can assure you that Tracy and I would have no relationship whatsoever if we never talked to each other, if we never interacted, if we never acknowledged one another. There, I, I could not truthfully say that we had a relationship if I had nothing to do with her. And some people think they have a relationship with God and have nothing to do with it. Prayer is important, guys. So where do I start, Brother Bud? Well. Start with grace before a meal. Start recognizing the Lord when you have an ability to do so. That's a good thing. Learn to start your day thanking Him for another day. Praying for other folks is a wonderful way to, to experience the heart of God who desires to bless, who wants to be a part. But you really should have prayer life. I don't know of anybody who's satisfied with their prayer life. That's just being honest. We could always pray more. But we need to be able to look at a personal and a private time of prayer. We should be able to love like Christ loved if He's in us. The love that we show for others is not about us. It's about others. It's selflessness, not selfishness. Love of the flesh is just demonstrated by selfishness. Love of God is dying to self, considering others more important than ourselves. And that should be a characteristic of all believers. Are we separate from the world? Can people look at my life and your life, and are we different? Do we abstain from things of the world that are ungodly, that are of the flesh, that bring no glory to God whatsoever? Are we really that different? from the people who never walk into a church. Part of the foundational understanding of being a person of integrity is understanding the Bible says come out from among them to be holy as I am holy. And there should be a separation. And then finally, we should give evidence of spiritual growth. We should be more like Christ today than we were in January of 2023. We should consistently be maturing and growing in obedience to His Word and seeking it and trying to apply it. We certainly have seasons of backsliding. I understand that. There's times that we sort of think we can coast in neutral. I shared this with Sunday school this morning. You can coast in neutral, but eventually you're going to start going backwards because our journey's uphill. You've got to be pressing on. And our lives should be demonstrative of that.
What about the consistency of our daily walk before the Lord and with the Lord? If I claim to be a Christian, I'm claiming to be with Christ, Christ like, Christ in me, the hope of glory. If, if I am identifying with Jesus, then my walk and my talk should be clear that what I profess and confess is what I'm actually living, okay? So how do I walk before others? Well, preacher, I do my best. That's not integrity. That's not integrity. Integrity is determining to let Jesus be best and to let others see him in us. If you're not sure what others think of your walk with Christ and you want to have a slice of humble pie real quickly, just ask people who are a big part of your life, do you feel that I consistently honor the Lord with how I walk and talk and have my existence? And I'd like you to be honest with me. The people who know you best can answer that best. It's just the truth. Sometimes it may hurt a little bit, but don't take, don't take a hard not to heart. Take it, uh, no, take it to heart, but take it to heart with a desire to make consistent changes, okay? And then I think part of our integrity is how we live when no one's around. What captivates our thoughts? If you're not sure what captivates your thoughts, then ask, what do I pursue the most? Anything that we pursue, we think about. So if we're thinking about the Lord and thinking about His glory and thinking about obedience and, and thinking about living a life and determined purpose of our life to walk like Christ walked, if that is what we have spent our moments considering, it's probably going to reflect in the way in which we live even when nobody's around. Sometimes we live for the Lord so people can see us. Sometimes we live for the Lord. That's not necessarily being a person of integrity because that can be manipulative. That can be manipulative. I want people to think. I need people to think. I don't want people to think less of me, and that's, that's certainly nothing wrong with that. But we've got to ask ourselves a question. When I live before others and in, when no one's around, is there discrepancies? between my public life and my private life. A person of integrity is balanced in public and private. Their thoughts are balanced, leaning toward, of course, the Lord Jesus. Folks, when you have integrity, listen, you're not worried about being caught and you're able to live without fear. Seriously, think about it. Sometimes, oh, I hope nobody catches me in this. Oh, my goodness. You don't have to live that way when you're a person of integrity. And you have a much less troubled heart. When you deal with other people, are you a person of integrity? When you have your dealings, do you have and are you reaping rewards, which is peacefulness, joy, gratitude? These are all uh, byproducts of living a life of integrity. Is your conscience clear when it comes to dealing with other people? If you've cheated somebody, we're not obviously a person of integrity. Do others trust you because of the way you treat them and love them? And are you recipients of the blessings of God? See, when we're people of integrity, we reap the rewards of living a life of integrity. And those, listen, part of that reward is joy in the Lord, satisfaction, a tremendous peace that cannot even be perceived. These are the attributes of being a person of integrity. Now, in Psalm chapter 25, we looked at these verses. Keep my soul, deliver me, let me not be ashamed. For I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me because I wait for you. Two things a person of integrity will always do. They're going to trust in the Lord. They're not going to lean upon their own understanding. They're not going to try to figure everything out. They're not going to say, you know what, this doesn't feel right. Uh, uh, even, even I know what the Bible says, Brother Bud, but it's just, just not me. Okay. We got to die to that type of thinking to be a person of integrity. It's what we're holding to and seeking after 
and putting trust. Sometimes, honestly, honestly, sometimes it's easier to put more trust in ourselves than to wait on the Lord. As a matter of fact, let me let you in on something. Being a man or woman integrity of integrity is hard. It's not easy at all. Part of the financial study I've been doing, I ask a question. And my dad, who was here, it was on Sunday night, uh, he was vocal. <laughs> he went, oh, <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> but I ask a question. What's more valuable, money in our hand now or treasures in heaven? Which is more valuable? See, we know treasures in heaven is the right answer. But oh my goodness, if I just had more money, preacher, things would be better. Part, part of, of understanding and being a, a person of trust is trusting the Lord to meet our needs, to sustain our lives, uh, to provide for us. And He will do a much better job of it than any money that we could accumulate. And it's believing that. It's who we put our trust in. And then the second part of that psalmist said, it's not that I trust the Lord, I'm willing to wait on Him. Now, does anybody like waiting? Seriously. So if you go to the doctor and your appointment's at 9 and you're still sitting there at 11, are you happy? <laughs> Honestly? I'm not. I had taken time off, which meant I wasn't working, which means when I was in college I wasn't being paid. So, so it was costing me to sit in the doctor's office, and I finally went and told the girl, I said, I'm, I'm going to have to leave. I, I've got to go back. I need it at work. I'm off right now. I'm off the clock. I'm a college student. We just have to reschedule a time. It's a little more. And I wasn't really ugly until she looked at me and said, and if you leave, you're still going to be billed for an appointment. And I thought, I said, can I bill you for my time? Waiting, <laughs> and uh, and then and, and then let me just say something. I, I acted on that too. I did leave. I was not billed for it, and I got another doctor. But I told the doctor why I went to another doctor. That not that I went to the doctor. He he wasn't making a living off of me in college. I was a pretty healthy guy. So guys, listen. Nobody likes to wait. Everybody likes to say, "Lord help," or "Lord I need," or "Lord provide." But we get very frustrated in waiting for him to meet that need, to provide what we've asked for. And sometimes I think we miss these tremendous blessings from God because we're impatient. Lord, I need this now. I need you to fix this. I, I, I don't know what to do about this. I need an answer now. And then we wait, and then we get frustrated, and then we go out and try to do it ourselves. And then going that route, we tend to make a mess of things. And we might get frustrated and say, Lord, Lord. I brought this to you, I've trusted you, and nothing happened. And there's a poem about that the Lord said, I was willing to and I was wanting to. You just never let go. You never let me have it. And that's where we put our trust and that's where we learn to wait, okay? Now the psalmist prayed this, let integrity and uprightness preserve me. The idea, by the way, uprightness is basically being honest. It's being honest and loyal in our dealings with others. Integrity is integrity. And here what he's asking for is to let integrity and uprightness guard me, protect me. That's what he's asking. In other, wo in other words, we can take integrity and we can take the desire to be honest in all our dealings and it's kind of like bookends that kind of hold us steady. You can look at it any way you want to. It could be something to hold on to. It could be something pressing against you. But in the end, it's holding you steady to live your life unto the Lord. Now listen, this is a step-by-step. -step. This is a moment-by-moment -moment prayer. This is not a one-time prayer. This is a come-to prayer many times, okay? And what we're asking is, Lord, I understand that you have a path for me that is being upright. I honestly understand that you have a way for me that's your way and is the best way. Integrity, integrity says, I'm going to walk this way now. Do you see it? I'm, I'm making a determined choice of my will to walk in the way that I know is right. 
And this is what he's praying, uh, the psalmist does. Now, certainly the Lord wants us to live with integrity. But I'm telling you, if you're going to live with integrity, you're going to find quickly that it's not easy. It's a lot easier to compromise. You sometimes can keep relationships more stable. You sometimes can appease someone else, sometimes even your own self and the flesh. But when you're deciding to live with a godlike character, and you want to be consistent in your public life, you want to be consistent in your uh, private life, and you want to be faithful in living out your faith in Jesus Christ. You are a person of integrity. You do hate sin. You do love God. You do desire. You do have prayers. If you're going to live consistently for the Lord, I want you to understand, it's going to be uncomfortable at times, and it will bring you to some very hard moments, and it will. Preacher, I want to choose to be a real person. I want to be honest, and I want to stand with convictions. You're going to be against the flow of a world that applauds the lack of convictions. Most people are easier to live with if they have no convictions. <laughs> they just go with the flow, keep the peace, whatever it takes. Compromise everything to have anything. That's not the way of integrity. But when we're living that integrity, you are impacting. Not only are you impacting, but you're influencing those around you. A job that I had, um, and, I, and I was somewhat high up the totem pole, so I made the decisions, and I made protocol decisions on how we were doing things. The owner that I worked for wanted me to do something that I didn't find was of integrity. I found it to be cheating people. I did. I just did. And so we sort of came to a clashing of heads. Now, I believe very strongly that a Christian should be a good employee. We should have a good character. We should be people of integrity. But in this one area, I wasn't willing to compromise. I was afraid it could cost me my job, which was livelihood. You know, job was livelihood. But when we sort of came to that Jesus moment where I was going to be corrected and I, I made a decision, I'm going to choose integrity. And I made the comment. I said, the Word of God says that God hates dishonest scales. And I cannot charge somebody for something that I'm not giving them. And I'm not going to do it. I'm just where was we ended it. I'm not going to cheat somebody. If somebody pays for this, then they ought to get that. Everybody agrees with that, don't you? I thought so. I thought it was a no-brainer. And I appreciate my boss, by the way. He had respect for that. He didn't like it. His face turned red. <laughs> and he said, let's just don't talk about it again. Do what you're going to do. And do you know that our business... It was more than one business they owned. Our business produced double what they did in that one area. People recognize integrity. They just do, folks. They just do, okay? So we should choose to do that. We should choose to do that. When, uh, when we, let me see here, I got to get back in my. When you make choices of integrity and you make a decision to stand, even if you're not going to be unpopular, you may pay a price for that. But even when paying that price, you are making incredible impacts in the hearts and lives of others. They may not like you. They may not agree with you. But when you choose for good and you have an unwavering commitment to the glory of God, folks will recognize that. They will. And you can make an impact on their life. The scriptures talk about the wife who is married to an unbelieving husband. So you have a wife that loves the Lord and a, and a husband who doesn't. They're not e they're unequally yoked. You have one living in darkness. You have one living in light. Inevitably, it's going to cause conflict. It's inevitable. It's going to cause conflict. So what does the Scripture say for the wife who's living in such a situation? It has, it, it's, it's very tremendous advice. 
It basically tells them to love that husband and to let him serve and to serve him in love because of your chaste obedience unto the Lord can win him without a word spoken. See how that influences? I'm going to live a life of character. I'm going to live a life of honor. I'm going to honor the Lord, but I'm going to love this man. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to let him lead. I'm going to continue to be a witness to him. I'm going to continue to live showcasing the joy I have in the Lord. The Apostle Paul said this could win him to the Lord. And your kids, folks. I think one of the most powerful testimonies I ever heard was a young lady talking about her daddy. How you could tell she was a daddy's girl. I don't know that she ever thought her daddy did something wrong. But she can remember as a little girl, her daddy was a farmer. And he'd work hard all day. And she could see her daddy coming home, and she loved to run out there and meet him. She could tell by the posture of him walking that he was praying. She could see her daddy praying at the end of every day before he came home. Her daddy would leave, lead the, the family in an altar at night. They'd read the Bible. He'd pray over his kids. And of all the memories that she had of her daddy, that was her most precious. He was a man of integrity. He was a man of prayer. He was not a man that compromised. He held firm. He held firm. And folks, I want to tell you, today when your kids want you to be cool and popular, because they want to be cool and popular, and, and you put your foot down, and you're not the cool mom and dad anymore, integrity will make up a lot of ground. And ultimately, your children will respect you for your stands. They may not like you in the moment, but they will respect you for your stands, and you're teaching them how to be people of integrity. Brother Bud, I want to be a person. I want to be a man of integrity. I want to be a woman of integrity. Where do I start? Let me give you a quote by Dwell L. Moody. D.L. Moody said this, It is a great deal better to live a holy life than to talk about it. Lighthouses do not ring bells and fire cannons to call attention to their shining. Lighthouses just shine. Folks, listen. If you're going to be a man or woman of integrity, you just got to shine for Jesus. Now, I'm going to give you a few things that will help you. Maybe some areas to say this is some line in the sand. This is a stake I'm putting down. I'm not going to cross this. Here's a handful of things that you can do to be a person of integrity. You can be truthful in what you say. There's no need to lie or exaggerate anything. And folks, listen. I remember when I sold carpet, I would hear... Sometimes people make these outlandish excuses because they forgot to order something and, you know, they may blame the shipping, they may blame this and whatever. I learned if I messed it up, I might not be understood and I may not be really liked, but I found it a lot easier to say, oh, man, I dropped a ball on this. Let me, let me get this taken care of. I apologize. Because then I'd have to worry about what I told them and remember what I got to tell them next when something else comes up. I learned as a young college boy that it's just a lot easier to take personal responsibility. Speak the truth, folks. Just tell the truth. If somebody asks you something and puts you on the spot and you know the truth is the answer they don't want to hear, but it's the truth, speak the truth. There's no need to lie. One lie begets another lie, and then you're not a person of integrity. You're not honest. You're not truthful. You're not reflecting the Lord, and you're not going to be trusted when you lie. There's no need for that. Speak the truth. Don't try to live a double life. A life at church, a life at home, a life at the workplace, a life amongst your friends. Be consistent in all of that. No matter who you're around, be you. Be truthful, be honest, be you, be genuine. I think everybody in here understands that sometimes we can live double and triple lives. 
We want our kids to think something of us. We want our spouses to think something of us or possibly our friends that we run around with. We live differently in all these different areas. Decide to be a person that has heartfelt purity in your life. Now, what do I mean by that? Your thoughts, your imaginations, what you dwell on, what goes on up here, and then how you live your life. Be a person of purity. Don't run after things of the flesh. Don't, don't, don't become preoccupied with the sensual things in the world. Guard your heart against lust, and not just sexual lust, but material lust, wealth lust, position, power. Don't sit around dreaming about how you want things in your life to be. Be more content to be pure before the Lord in your thought processes, okay? For your employers, guard your attitude. Be the best worker that you can be as a believer. They'll mark you as a person of integrity. When you do make a mistake, don't play the blame game. When God came to Adam and Eve, woman, what have you done? The snake did it. Adam, what have you done? The woman you gave me did it. <laughs> y'all see, and we all do that, don't we? I call it the blame game. I would be serving the Lord if it wasn't for this, this, or this instead of I'm not serving the Lord because I'm not serving the Lord. <laughs> I mean, don't blame everything. In the end, it doesn't really matter because the buck stops with us. So let's just don't play that, okay? And when others have made a mistake, don't try to deride them because they made a mistake. Just be grateful that they're in your life and that you can be an example of them of forgiveness. Make a determined choice not to dabble around in things that are corrupt. Lying and stealing, paying back bills, financial dealings, personal dealings. Just make, you're just not going to do it. Just make up your mind that I'm going to be on the up and up in all of my dealings with others or businesses or credit or whatever it may be. Could even be Uncle Sam. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Just don't participate in lies and deceptions, okay? If you want to be a person of integrity, don't take advantage of someone. Don't, don't make the failures of others stepping stones for you. Sometimes in, in a marriage relationship or even with child-parent relationships or sometimes with family relationships, Somebody messes up and it's forever remembered and recalled and pointed out. Man, I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me all the time, would you? Honestly, I wouldn't want somebody to. Learn to forgive. Make restitution. But for goodness sakes, don't take advantage of someone. And then finally, and this is the hardest part, guys, have a consistent walk with the Lord the end of every day, look back at the day, evaluate it, inventory it, whatever you need to do, write about it so you can remember, but just remember your day, how you interacted with people, opportunities you had, maybe you missed, things that you recognize could be better. Talk to the Lord about those things. Go to bed, sleep well, wake up the next day. Start your day praising Him and determining to be a man or woman of integrity. You'll begin to make impacts, okay? So am I a man or woman of integrity? Only we can answer that question, but let's answer it honestly today, okay? Let's bow together. Father, I ask you to help us today to understand what it means to have conviction, what it means to be a person of influence, for those around us. W what it means by letting our daily walk reflect you and your principles and your love and your commands. Lord, I pray today that you would help us to be men and women of integrity in our homes, amongst our friends, in the workplace, certainly in the church. 
And Lord, let us be counted worthy for the hardships that we may encounter by simply saying, I'm not compromising. I'm going to live for you, Lord. Even if I suffer loss, I desire to live for you. Lord, I personally believe that we've got some really hard days coming ahead for our nation. And I believe a lot of things that we trust and rely on are going to evaporate. And Lord, if, if we're not standing on you, there's going to be a lot that I'm afraid are going to be so disillusioned. Lord, help us depend on you for everything. Our homes, our clothing, our food. And help us be people of integrity as we live in such a way to depend on you for these things. I pray for the one who may be here today that honestly doesn't have those attributes of knowing that Christ is foundational. They don't love you. They don't love your word. They don't have a heart to obey. They have no desire to bring glory to your name. And yet, Lord, you have wonderfully brought conviction to that. Please let them know that even today they can repent of that life and that mindset and they can turn from that and turn to you. And, Lord, I pray for that even this hour. Lord, that one might turn their heart to you in, in believing faith, trusting you to forgive them, to cleanse them, to uphold them, to save them. And I pray that even today, Lord, that might be done. And again, all for your glory. And Lord, we bring all these needs to you now and all these petitions. And Lord, I ask you to make these things real to us. And Lord, that we might commit ourselves to honor you in the way we live our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.